last, a proper performance car. I thought I'll never get to do this. Ever since I joined, it's been SUVs, SUVs, and more SUVs. But now I've got this. It's the Mark 7.5 Volkswagen Golf R, and this is just a little more special because it's the three-door version. This car review episode is powered by the all-new Petronas Premax 95 with Pro Drive. So I've asked around for some opinions on how the new Mark 7.5 Golf R looks like and unanimously it's been well received. Although some have said that perhaps it could look a little more aggressive, I do agree to some small extent because I do believe that there's nothing wrong in subtlety. Take this front end for example, compared to the Mark 7 R, it does indicate that it means business without having to jump out of the page with a protruding front splitter, big canards, racing stripes and a huge wing. If the standard Golf TSI or the Golf GTI looked like this, the Golf R doesn't need to look like this. It's like one of those unassuming Japanese knives. They're discreet, but try to undermine it and it will show you how sharp it is. Speaking of sharp, I think the head and tail lamps are the best looking in the Golf so far. In the front, you have these adaptive LED headlamps with a honeycomb design embedded inside, where it also comes with a dynamic light assist feature that allows the projector to swivel according to your steering inputs. At the back, well, just look at it. I think the sequential signals are just the bomb. Unlike the Golf GTI, you don't get fog lamps in this area here, but instead you get vents to channel more air to the car's cooling system. On the side, I think the Mark 7 in general, although this is a facelift, looks the best among all the previous models. When the Mark 5 first made its return, I thought, nice, looks like a proper hot hatch. And then came the Mark 6, a little too understated, a bit too shy. And then this came along and, hmm, yep, this is the one. And I think these 19-inch Pretoria wheels really suits the car and from the side, it makes the car look really good. But I especially like the design of this C-pillar here, which is angular but sharp at the same time. Even after all these years, and this car has been around since what, 2012? It still looks fresh and I believe it will continue to be so. On that point, did you know that the man behind this look, Walter Silva, former head of design at VW Group, was criticised by some quarters for coming up with a design that they considered as conservative. But he stood his ground and was convinced that over time, a clean and timeless look was the way forward. In case you didn't know, this was also the same person who was responsible for the Alfa Romeo 156 and the Audi R8. And look at how those cars look even after all these years. Still fresh. And since this is a three-door model, I'm sure there's going to be an ongoing debate on which looks better this or the five-door model. If you ask me, personally, I feel the three-door model at 294,000 ringgit looks rather sporty. But for an extra 10K, you get two extra doors, which makes the Golf R look a little more proportionate, if that makes any sense. Right, on the shortcomings of the car, and this is very brief because it can be felt within a very short process, from the moment you want to get into the car to the point where you want to start the engine. But once inside, it's just typical of the Golf we've been so used to for the past few years now, except this startling new addition, a digital instrument cluster that's capable of showing you almost every possible information you need to know about the car. And speaking of information, I really like that you can have three different gauge displays up front here to display all the car's vital information such as boost pressure, oil temperature and water temperature. For those who are in their 30s and 40s now who used to own Evos and Subarus with gauges cluttering their dashboards back in their 20s, this is definitely a very modern touch to a nostalgic site. What I do find strange is this. I mean, what's this for? It's a Golf R. Who cares about these things? What's also quite puzzling is the reverse camera display. Despite how crisp the digital display is on the infotainment system or the instrument cluster, when you put the car into reverse, wow. It makes you wonder if your eyes need checking or if you forgot your contact lens. Elsewhere, everything else from the position of the steering, the gear lever and the pedals are all just typical of a Golf. It's very ergonomic, unmistakable and uncomplicated. But more importantly, it doesn't try too hard to be loud, shouty and shiny, overly striking just like most modern cars these days. And I find that very admirable 
sticking to the understated yet functional design of the Golf. Now, before I carry on, just let me get this out of the way. VW Malaysia only brought in 10 units of this three-door Golf R, and except for this one, the rest of the nine have all been snapped up. But since we're with this three-door model, let me show you how easy it is to actually get in and out of the back seat. And this is also why you don't get electric seats, so that it's easy for passengers to get in and out. Me being 180 centimeters tall, check this out. Simple. And I really appreciate the fact that the seats actually stop to the position where I formerly left it. And with this being my proper driving position, there's plenty of knee room and leg room and even head room as well. It'll definitely accommodate you for a longer than usual journey. I also appreciate that despite the limited space, obviously with this being a three-door Golf, they've still managed to offer you some storage spaces with a compartment here and some cup holders at the bottom. So with that in mind, if you were to get the five-door model, which is the only Golf R you can buy in Malaysia, rest assured that there will be no shortage of space. Now because this is a Golf R, let's get straight down to the numbers. 2-litre turbocharged 4-cylinder, just like the one you find in the Golf GTI, but this has been tweaked to give you 60 more horsepower at 290 and 30 more newton meters of torque at 380. And it's just ballistic. Now before all else, I'll first admit, there is a negligible lag in the lower end of the rev range, although it's noticeably better than before. I actually like driving the car in sports mode around urban areas. It makes it feel like a torquey, naturally aspirated car. And I'll admit that I'm actually a bigger fan of the Golf GTI. With power only sent to the front wheels, it feels more light-footed, less lethargic with less weight. Especially around urban areas and smaller roads, it's like a rabbit on Red Bull. This one, this one's a rabbit strapped with machine guns and rocket launchers and it's ready for blood. Once you get it going, my goodness, the way it delivers performance. Smooth, refined, relentless, madness. You get so much punch from about 3000 RPM onwards. It's got such a wide power band that it just keeps going until the red line. It just keeps asking for more, another gear, another gear. Between second gear and third and third gear to fourth. Whew. It just keeps you on your feet and on the edge. And when you pop it into race, everything just gets amplified and in a very obvious way. The steering and ride becomes firmer, the throttle response is at its sharpest, and that noise, it's just so intoxicating. It's a fake noise, but nonetheless still a nice fake noise. Now we all know that the PDKs in the Porsches are some of the best in the business. And I reckon this DSG is a very close second. Well, I mean, they're from the same company anyways. You get a sense that it's very efficiently utilizing the engine's performance. Between gears, there's no dip in power in automatic. And when you're shifting manually with these pedal shifters here, it's almost instantaneous. It feels snappy. Also in race mode, I like how the steering loads up just enough, allowing you to precisely place the car into the entry of a corner and hold it through. The brakes, although it bites hard, it doesn't threaten to send you through the front windscreen. Pedal feels nice and firm, making it easy for you to control your brake inputs. I really worry for the Myvi that's tailgating this car because considering how rapidly it can slow down, there's no way the Myvi can brake hard enough. Going through the corners in the GTI because it's only front wheel drive, if you push it a little too hard, you do feel its limitations. But with all wheel drive in this, the system can send up to 50% of the power to the rear wheels. So when you're powering through and out of the corners, the car just maintains a very neat line with so much composure and traction. It's very assuring, very satisfying. But of course, that being said, no car is ever foolproof, no matter how competent it is. If you get carried away and push it a little too hard, trouble is always just around the corner. And when you slow everything down, it's just adequately equipped with everything you need. Visibility is great, it's not overly loud, you don't have to refuel every two days, and there's enough space for reasonably sized things. 
In a way, this car reminds me a lot of the old Evos and the Impreza's. Yeah. 90% of the time, throughout your daily commutes, it can be civil and do everything you'd expect of a daily car. But at 10%, when you're on a mountain road on an empty highway, it just springs to life. This sort of duality also reminds me of the Porsche 911, a car I'm very fond of because of how usable and forgiving it is. But when you get it going, in the right hands, it can really punch above its weight. In comfort mode, which is what you'll be in most of the time, while I wouldn't say it's supremely comfortable, the firmness of the ride is actually quite reasonable. They should just call it the reasonable mode. If anything, what really affects the ride of the car is those 19-inch wheels. It looks fantastic, but because they're so massive, they're sitting on 35 profile tyres. That's like, what, two inches of rubber between the wheels and the tarmac? Me especially being quite blind to the potholes around KL, I've had to be so careful. KL roads just suck. Admittedly, this may not be the most exciting car to look at, and in the used market, you can spend a lot less and your options will be plenty. Take the Elise or the Exige for example. Fun, engaging to drive, costs just over 100,000, and the supercharged ones will just leave this for dust. But then again, it's not for everyone. First of all, it's a manual. It's hard to get in and out of. There's no power steering. Insulation is quite bad and visibility is shit. The A45 AMG, bumpy. The JCW Mini Cooper, well, the image isn't exactly what I call universal. The McGann RS and the white Gundam robot that GCMA drove recently, manual. As competent as the McGann RS and the Civic Type R is, how many people can drive a manual these days? And those who can, don't really bother with it anymore. In the Golf R, it gives you everything you need in a daily car and then on demand, all the power you'll ever need to take down half the population on the road. But more importantly, it's reasonably comfortable. And for that very reason, we decided to feature it in our annual car of the year video along with the likes of Ferrari's 812 Superfast and Aston Martin's V8 Vantage. Not that it could accelerate as quickly as them, but at speeds way beyond the scope of sensibility, it just hung on and cruised along with the big boys. Brilliant. <laughs> so, is this Mark 7.5 Golf R the car for you? If you're looking for something as utilitarian as, say, a Swiss Army knife, where you can use to pop open a bottle of wine, or even as a weapon, then yes. But if you think that for this money, you can get something that looks more aggressive, more plush, or even comes with more features, then probably not. For more information on the Mark 7.5 Golf R, do log on to autobuzz.my. If you enjoyed the video, do hit the like button, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon for the latest updates on our newest videos. This car review episode is powered by the all-new Petronas Premax 95 with ProDrive. Move like never before. Ever since I joined, it's been SUVs, SUVs and more SUVs. Smile, smile. Nice. Looks like a proper hatch hat. Hatch hatch. <laughs> And since this is a treat, uh, too much. I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs>